Hi, I'm Sam Ramji, Senior Director of Platform Strategy. I work in Microsoft's server and tools business. Much of my job is to ensure that we have strong connections with open source developers and with customers, enabling technology to run on and next to Microsoft platforms effectively from everywhere from the data center uh, to departments and desktops. And I'm Tom Hanrahan, Director of the Open Source Technology Center at Microsoft. I'm excited to be here today to be able to introduce the OSTC to the Channel 9 viewers. And in fact, we have some pretty interesting news to tell you. It's exciting news, and I think it does require some context setting. We've been engaging in a new era, a new phase of our open source strategy for the last several years. Um, for the last three and a half years or so since we established open source as a possible benefit to uh, Microsoft customers, uh, we have been working through projects with the open source community, I think best synthesized at our participation in OzCon, the open source conference. Um, four years ago, we came and provided lunch. We said, Microsoft, free as a lunch. We thought we were awfully clever. But the subsequent years, we made more progress. Uh, a few years ago, we talked about architecting for participation. And a year ago, I had the privilege of talking about our move from participating to contributing with our first ever release of an LGPL uh, software contribution to a project called ADODB, a PHP data access layer. That was a small contribution, just a patch, but it was a tipping point for what's been a pretty extraordinary year. It has been an extraordinary year, Sam, and I think that a lot of our success has been due to the fact that we've really taken some different approaches to how to ga engage with the open source community. Clearly, one of the things that we wanted to do was to be able to um, ensure that um, open source projects and open source products could run well on the Windows platform. So we've taken a lot of time to integrate um, products like PHP to run on the Windows platform. Absolutely. We wanted to introduce uh, Microsoft technology to open source developers. So Silverlight technology, I think, is a great example of that. Um, when it was announced a couple of years ago, we immediately began discussing with Miguel de Casa and his group of developers on uh, the possibility of having um, him uh, bring this out, uh, this technology out for the Linux platform and other platforms. And he did this under the, the name of Moonlight. And it was he who brought it to us, as I recall, because he jumped up after Scott Guthrie's presentation at Mix and said, I'm so excited. And then subsequently, we've also worked with uh, Eclipse developers in the Eclipse for Silverlight project to enable cross-platform cross authoring of Silverlight applications. Right, and as you know, this technology has been it already been used. Um, it was used on election night That's right. um, when uh, uh, President Obama um, uh, acknowledged his victory and it was uh, streamed um, across uh, Windows and Mac platforms using the Silverlight technology and over Linux using the Moonlight technology. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we also um, incorporate open source into our, our products and right. uh, you gave a great example of this earlier in the year in your Port 25 blog when you talked about Open Pegasus, sure. which is an implementation of the SIM and WebM protocols being used as a module within System Center so that we're able to manage both Linux and Windows platforms and, and data centers. It just made so much sense to use extensible pre-existing open source agents to connect System Center to Linux and Unix boxes and then to be able to let customers and developers modify that as they saw fit. Right. Interoperability is an important part of, of what we do and that's been a focus for us uh, at the Microsoft Novell Interoperability Lab in Cambridge where we've our first project was to ensure that Linux could run as a guest on top of Hyper-V so that we had interoperability in, in data centers between Windows platforms and Linux platforms. And then the, the final way that we engage with the open source community is just in a general sense. We've already talked a little bit about some of the engagements we've had from corporate Microsoft, but um, our subsidiaries engage with local developers and local communities as well. Um, so I've been really impressed with some of the projects that your satellite labs uh, under the OSTC have, have brought in, for anywhere from the Interop router to the Croatian plug blog project and to some of the, the new projects we're seeing on uh, MPI programming and translations in, in India and Brazil. Exactly right, exactly right. So that leads us to the news that we want to present today. True. So um, this is something that you kind of uh, mentioned in passing, this rocket science of enabling Linux to be virtualized on top of Microsoft's hypervisor. So you're talking about a hypervisor that may not have been designed or it wasn't designed for multiple operating systems in the first place. It was designed to meet the needs of Windows virtualization. But we realized very quickly that we needed to be able to have cross-platform virtualization. And you've been working on uh, some of that rocket science in your lab. 
uh, yeah. in Cambridge for some years. So this is really a culmination of our participation with open source communities, understanding how to do things the right way, and to build really valuable technology for customers. Right. Well, to, uh, it's important to understand one key point of uh, virtualization, that is, when you have an operating system running as a virtual machine, it needs to know that it's doing that, so that it doesn't try to make calls directly to different peripherals. Um, in Microsoft terminology, we call this enlightenment. Mm -hmm. So the Windows Server 2008 was designed enlightened so that it would know when it was running as a virtual machine or know when it was running on physical right. hardware. Um, in order for Linux to have the same kind of experience on Hyper-V, it had to have the same enlightenment. Right. And in order to do this, we had to write Linux device drivers. Right. So um, my team, working with the Hyper-V team, um, created these uh, Linux device drivers and um, and so these device drivers then were released um, mm -hmm. with the first version of, of Hyper-V and are available to our customers to use. Sure, so you've been able to download this for a while and you've been able to use it for a while. What's different today? Well, what's different today is that um, the Linux community approached us saying that these are Linux device drivers. Um, the, the normal way of managing Linux device drivers is to contribute these to the community sure. and make them available to um, other distributors um, other, uh, uh, both commercial and non-commercial distributors so that the code is freely available for everybody to modify and to make run on their platform. So what we're announcing today is that Microsoft is releasing the Linux device drivers that it created under the GPL V2 license to the Linux community. That seems like a pretty big deal to me. It's the first GPL V2 project that Microsoft's ever contributed to. It is, it is. And, and again, great thanks um, go to Greg Crow Hartman, who was the Linux community member who approached us originally about doing this, and has really worked with us over the last uh, few months to help us understand the process for doing this and, um, and helped us kind of work through some of the hurdles that, that we had in, in making this decision. And as he pointed out, this is a contribution to the Linux kernel. It is. It's a contribution to the Linux kernel, and it's one that we and, uh, expect and, and uh, are planning to be actively involved in. So we're not just turning the code over, but um, uh, our engineers will continue to work on the development of these device drivers. This effort is going to be led within Microsoft by one of my principal engineers, Hank Jensen, um, who um, has been involved with um, handing the code off to Greg in, in this first round and will continue making um, contributions through Greg um, to it. And Hank um, has a pretty great background for he contributing does. to the Linux kernel. He does. Um, Hank, um, in the early 80s, worked at Bell Labs. Um, he worked with Kernighan and Ritchie in the development of both System 4 and System 5 Unix. Um, later, he began um, working with um, Linux and was instrumental in delivering some telecommunications um, implementations. Of I think he built one of the first carrier grade uh, Linux systems. That's right. Back That's in right. 1994. So um, Hank will be the um, person at Microsoft who um, uh, does the, uh, the coordination with, uh, with Greg and with the Linux community. It's fantastic. It is. And this week you're going to have a number of your lab members at, uh, in San Jose, California at uh, the Open Source Conference uh, 2009. That's right. We will be in the booth um, and we'll have a couple of demonstrations. One, of course, will be Linux running as a guest on top of Hyper-V. Um, we'll also be demonstrating um, the latest release of PHP, that's PHP 5.3, winning on the Windows platform. Another one of my engineers, Garrett Sirock, um, who has um, uh, been instrumental in, in, in moving um, PHP to a, to a much better place for Windows. And in 5.3, he, he helped uh, re-implement a, a number of lost libraries. He created the build scripts that are now used to automate the, the build process for creating PHP in Windows. He will be in the booth demonstrating that capability. And he's also the first Microsoft engineer in history to be given the privilege of uh, commit rights to part of PHP. We're pretty excited about that. Pretty phenomenal. Yeah. So we're bringing uh, you, your team, we'll have, a, I think, a strong um, engagement with anybody who wants to talk about uh, their concerns or their ideas. Um, if you're attending OSCON uh, 2009 or if you're in the Channel Net audience and you have some suggestions, uh, criticism, idea, strategies, projects that you want us to support through Tom's open source developer program where we make MSDN premium subscriptions available at no cost for developers building open source technologies. Uh, let us know and to the channel and audience we hope you'll have us back um, and we really appreciate you spending your time today listening to what we've got to uh, announce. Tom, thanks a lot. Thanks Sam.